the Texas quarterbacks were on display during the spring game the other day, and Texas got after it in the spring game. And I applaud them. Okay, they they had a legitimate spring game, and it was very entertaining. And while we didn't learn everything we need to learn, you could learn a fair amount from watching the Texas spring game. Well, a lot of you watched Arch Manning go off through for 355 and like three touchdowns, and then you had some opinions. And that's cool. I've got them. Everyone's got them. I talked about the Texas spring game in totality on the Sunday show, just like I did several other teams. And I thought that was it. I thought we were done. Then I pick up the eye, Josh, and I see that I have dozens and dozens of you with feedback. And I welcome it, and I always appreciate it. But a lot of you had, had things to say that I just disagreed with. So I wrote down like four of them that were most common. Um, one of them is accurate. I just don't care. So a lot of people watched Arch Manning go off, and Quinn Ewers is still listed as the starter there. And you said, oh, poor Quinn Ewers. This is going to put so much pressure on him. I, look, I, I know a lot of Quins in my life with a lot of pressure on them. Quinn Ewers being one of them. It doesn't matter. You're the, you're the quarterback at the University of Texas. You've got your own private jet deal. You don't think there was already going to be pressure on Quinn Ewers? And secondly, he's not saying this. Okay, so I'm not saying this to him. I'm saying this to people who say it about him. If he doesn't like it, he can leave. He's not going to leave because he doesn't care. But I, I'm talking to people who think that this is like some deal breaker or this is some insurmountable yoke that he has to have thrust upon his shoulders he is the starting quarterback at texas man that is a pressure spot that's a heat position you never play at texas assuming there won't be other good players in your room you should never play at a place like that or bama or georgia or ohio state or usc it should always be competitive if it's not you're not at the right place i don't care if you're the best in the country you ought to have guys pushing you every day which leads me to my second point it could divide the team. Some of you said, this could divide the team. You let Arch play that well in a spring game setting and guys see it. Some guys in the locker room may think he's the best. Other guys may think Quinn Ewers is the best. Josh, what happens? What happens in week one if Texas offensively goes three and out a couple of times? Then they play defense and then get back on the field and score and go win. That's what they do. Um, this only divides a locker room that's already fractured. We've talked about this before on this program. I am not a believer in this. I am a believer that quarterback battles and what you want to call a controversy maybe, oh, they can fracture a locker room. They can fracture a locker room that's easily fracturable. That's why coaches talk about culture 366 days out of the year. That's why you got these graphics all over these walls and all these buildings we go to. It's not just decorative. It's not just aesthetically pleasing. They try and build their programs on that because you can't afford that. You can't afford to be scared to have high-level, day-in-day-out competition as the culture in your building because it may divide some people. Some guys may think one guy's better than the other one. Uh, they all want to win, last I checked. People didn't sign up to conditionally win at Texas. They signed up to win, period. And Quinn Ewers, according to that coaching staff that you trusted enough to commit to the program under, thinks that he gives you the best shot to win. And the day they don't think that, by the way, is the day that another guy will start there. So I dismiss that. I dismiss that Arch is better. Some of you came at me and said that, and I, I've very, very easily responded to this one. If he is, then he'll start. And I don't think he's going to start. So Arch Manning looked phenomenal. Uh, this may be misconstrued as crap on Arch Manning Day. No, it's not that at all. I think some people sold that guy short out of high school. You thought his last name was what was baked into his star rating. No, he's a really good player. Arch Manning would start at 90-plus percent of major programs this year. He happens to be at one of the top 2 or 3% where there's a guy in front of him that just gives him a little bit better shot to win. If that's not the case, then... Steve Sarkeesian has a decision to make. Does he want to placate to a guy's mood, or does he want to do his job? Uh, they're not going to hesitate to make the move there. Hey, there may come a time this year where Quinn Ewers is not injured, and he starts a game, and for whatever reason, they need a spark. And Quinn Ewers out, and Arch Manning in, and you want to talk about controversy. You want to talk about pressure. You want to talk about spotlight. Imagine the questions after that. It's like Saban making the move from Hurts to Tua, but imagine that happened in week eight. What are you doing in week nine? 
who's starting in week nine. So I don't think Arch Manning is better because if he was better, I think he'd start. So if you're right, he'll start. And also, it could um, y- you could lose him. That was the other. I was trying to read my own handwriting. A lot of, well, not a lot of you. I had a, I had a few of you, admittedly, only like six or seven of you. You said you shouldn't put your best quarterbacks on display like that because you could lose them to the portal. To which I said, good. It's not good to lose guys per se, but Texas lost Malik Murphy, and they're okay. Their quarterback room looks fine because they can recruit and develop. It wasn't just Arch Manning that shined the other day, by the way. So development, recruiting, there's no shortage of talent there. But again, if a guy leaves, it wasn't your starter. Your starter's not going to leave. And if a guy stays, he's staying for the right reasons. And you're, you're fully built out there NIL-wise to make sure you keep your guys home. But if someone gets scared enough away by that competition level and they want to leave, then let them leave. I don't remember getting to the finish line very often. Granted, we're young in the transfer portal era. I get that. I don't think we'll get to the finish line very often and watch coaches regret being competitive, letting their guys play, and losing a few of them in the portal as a result of that as being what kept them from achieving their goal. I I doubt that, and if it happens one time, five times will be the exception wherein, well, actually, the one time will be the exception. Five times will be the rule, wherein that kind of culture fostered a championship-winning team. That's how I think that'll go. So the whole Texas quarterback situation, going to be a lot of fun to talk about, going to be a lot of fun to watch. I just happened to disagree with a lot of people's takes on that the other day, and I wanted to touch on that for a little while.